So uh, that background is pretty sweet. There's a uh, serious fog over here around the marsh. You got the, uh, the seagulls crowing or calling, whatever they do, they're making noise. It's just a, just a really beautiful, quiet, misty, foggy, rainy day. Love it out here. First thing I saw when exploring the island was this house that had recently caught fire. Directly behind it is one of the largest salt marshes in the entire United States, which has been known to flood from time to time, and it did just that. The flood had left tons of debris scattered everywhere and certainly made for a really interesting subject. We begin our journey just north of Boston at a place that's known as one of the Atlantic Coast best locales to spot shorebirds and waterfowl. Parker River National Wildlife Refuge on famed Plum Island is where we're headed. So, as you guys can probably see, there is these uh, tufts of, I'm not even sure what they are. This stuff is really interesting and it's almost black. It's almost black as night. And uh, you get these little pops of orange, which obviously don't really matter because we're shooting on black and white. But I do like the gradation between the really dark rooted parts and then how lighter it gets towards the top. There's also this really nice burnt stump up there that I think I'm going to try to find a composition out of. That shutter doesn't sound very good for some reason. Maybe it's all the mist in the air. It's all about the stance, haunching down. Two second exposure at F32, and the reason why I'm doing F32 here um, is because I want to get as much in focus as I possibly can. I wish you could see how my tripod is sitting right now. It's literally like this. Fortunately, there's sand here so I can dig in, but yeah, we're going to shoot at F32, try to get every part of this piece of wood in focus, which should be fairly easy. But I do want to get that out there. My only issue is because this is on the left side of my frame, the right hand might be a little bit blurry just because of, uh, of swing and, and some tilt I've put on it. Uh, not sure, but definitely want to take the exposure anyways.
Beautiful. The famed pink house on Plum Island is probably the most photographed abandoned house on the entire North Shore. I spent about 45 minutes waiting for the perfect light during that sunrise and just sitting along one of the busiest roads and actually the only road in and out of Plum Island was, well, it was, it was pretty boring. I just don't have the patience at this hour. One thing I'm really excited about with this shot is I'm getting a lot of that foreground, this little driveway that leads up to it, and there's some really cool windows that are really transparent that are gonna give a little added extra layer to it, which I think is pretty interesting. It's just a really beautiful sunrise. We get some nice clouds. I think it's just gonna turn out pretty darn good today. That is just the coolest sunrise. Absolutely beautiful. the bummer this morning so I shot this behind me uh, about a week and a half ago and uh, today marks my last day here at the Parker River Wildlife Refuge in this little documentary series on Plum Island and uh, one of the things I really wanted to take advantage of before uh, the project was over was doing some abstract images of this beach heather and uh, unfortunately right now it's completely changed colors and uh, doing some research a couple of days ago, I realized that this beach heather doesn't turn the color that it was the other day very often. And I really, really kind of blew my, my opportunity there and shooting it in black and white. But I mean, that's, that's kind of the way she goes sometimes with photography. It's, you know, you come out here and you plan these images and sometimes you just don't get what you were hoping for. It's been, like I said, about a week and a half and the colors have just completely drained out of this beach heather. So now it's, now it's gray. There's no more black and orange, really unfortunate, but I still might do a composition out of it. I might try to do some black and white because uh, there's really not much color here. So see what I can do with it. <laughs> I love that little pop of green in there. It just looks so cool. Definitely gonna shoot with uh, Ektar. supposed to be 66 degrees today, but currently it is not. My hands are about frozen. Let's take that shot. I'm shooting with a combination of Kodak Ektar 100 and Ilford Delta 100. One of those is my favorite film and the other is Kodak Ektar. <laughs> I've had a lot of issues with Kodak Ektar in the past, mainly due to inconsistency, but this film is designed for landscapes and I think I'd be doing it a disservice if I didn't give it one last shot on the 4x5. So traveling back on the, uh, on the road here, I saw something else that I really wanted to capture and it was this, this lone tree out here just kind of standing alone in the marsh and it was really interesting. We've got some really subdued light, really low contrast right now. So I think some ectar would be pretty good for this. We've got a nice green in the tree and uh, lots of yellows and blues in the background. So what I want to do, shoot this real shallow.
you're just wandering through this pine grove now and it's I'm finding it really difficult to find a composition here every time I see a tree I think that's a that's a good tree to photograph and then I uh, I move a little bit further down the line and as I kind of you know navigate my way around it to try to find a composition I end up finding something else that I think is better and now I've made my way pretty deep into this pine grove to the point where um, I don't even know. I'm just, I'm just lost at this point. Not physically lost. I know how to get out of here, but in terms of what I want to do, it's, it's posing some challenges for sure. Truth be told. I'm not finding anything and I'm not going to force an exposure, especially what's going to be my last shot of Ektar for the day. I might just grab up on this uh, on the trail here and see where the trail takes me and shoot something up there because this, this grove of pines is really interesting, but the light's not very good right now. And uh, I'm not going to force a shot where there isn't one. Yeah, I like that better. You know, when I was down in that pine grove, my judgment was pretty clouded. I was really trying to force exposures, trying to find something, but I was really happy to kind of make my way out of there because once I did, I found a composition that I really liked. Yeah, I feel a little bit more rejuvenated, walked out of the pines a little bit, and now I got this really beautiful curving walking path all the way up to the beach. We got some really cool colors. The sky is, like I said, really low in contrast. Nice haze in the sky, so we're not getting any harsh highlights, which kind of works to our advantage right now. So, set this up. What in tarnation? I'm gonna set this up and take my last shot. This beach boardwalk with all these nice little pine trees kind of sprung up here and there, and some nice grass with that cyan blue sky really made for a great composition and I'm so glad because that was my last exposure of Kodak Ektar and I would have been pretty bummed if I tried to force something in the pine grove so that just goes to show that um, try not to force exposures because sometimes if they're not there they're not there if they're not speaking to you it's probably not worth shooting certainly faced some challenges in the short span that I was working on this project and I think eventually I'd like this to be a sort of ongoing project and shoot it on a season to season basis and see how things change but right now I couldn't be happier with what we have and I hope you guys enjoyed the video as well. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. I tried to plaster it down with some pomade, but now it's just kind of sticking straight up with the wind in my face. I look like uh, one of the wet bandits from Home Alone when he gets shocked. <laughs> had a lot of I've had a lot of issues with Kodak Ektar. I've had a lot of issues with Kodak Ektar. So here's to you, Kodak. Oh man, that was the first part I saw. Damn it. Missed it. I 
suppose now is a, probably a good time to tell you that I'm terrified of heights.